Wow, it was louder than what? <laughs> What's up? We're back. I thought that would be funnier. <laughs> it wasn't. <clears throat> Earlier today, we found a model. It did not go smoothly, but in the end, great, except for the head, which we all know I don't like. But we're going to do some animations. It's going to be cool. Got some oatmeal peanut butter in it. Chowed down, it's really good. Never tried that. Just plain oatmeal? That sounds so boring. <laughs> plain oatmeal? Plain peanut butter. Not plain peanut butter. I mean, peanut butter is pretty rich and salty and sweet, but. Anyway, <laughs> that's the recipe. <laughs> so, do this. Start from the beginning. We're back in here. Uh, I made some changes. Um, I corrected some of the mesh right here. I made some other little adjustments. Added some IK features um, to the hands and the feet. So, you know, we covered one of them, but now it's like the rotations. I only have this one bone I have to worry about. Uh, do that stuff. And then um, I hit some of the other bones. So, how you do that is when you're in edit mode, and hit M. You can change bone layers. This is like the current one, and I move them all into here. So if we go to here, we have our layers, shift, and then click on it. Do that. If you do a single click, it'll just go to that one layer. So these are all the bones that deform and they're important, but we don't manipulate those. We use our IKs. So pose mode though. Grab those. That lets us do our poses. I actually like to learn a little bit more about how to set up a good color, okay, because I kind of have to do that separate, and I'd rather not. <clears throat> anyway, and some poses you don't necessarily want it, so that's kind of why, at least in my experience so far. Kind of hard sometimes. I mean, maybe it isn't. Maybe I'm just like misunderstanding some poses. Anyway, save that. And we'll get started with an animation. Go ahead and click up here. Drag it over. Make sure our stream is working. Okay. Stream and sweet. Push this trace. Oops. Key to close that. We'll go down here. And so whenever you make a new window, it can be whatever you want. So you may have noticed, like, some people recommend that. Like, you can have this in side view, you can have this in front view. You're working over here, and if you need it over here, work on the side, do that. It can be really nice. But we're gonna do <laughs> animations. <laughs> dope sheet. So dope. I don't know why it's called that, but it's cool. And then we click dope sheet and do action editor. Go down here. And actually down here we want the timeline. Down here, click on that, and so you know the keys mean it's like for the keyframe. It's going to be location, rotation, and scale. And so that means it's going to set that for the IK. So you can set it for if you only want to do like certain stuff that's like not every. Wow. <laughs> Just set it to that. <laughs> so when you're down here, I don't know if there's a way to slide it normally, but you use the middle mouse wheel and you can slide your little menus over, which is great, you need that. Go here, I'm gonna go ahead and call it idle. This is all the way up to 100, which we don't want. We work in terms of like 60 or 30. Not so much. Pretty good. I'll idle. So, you know, as your king, you can start on zero. Sometimes I start on one. I don't know why I do that. <laughs> Hit I, insert keyframes. So it's going to show all that stuff that we have. It's showing other stuff. It'd be nice if we could hide it. 
It's not that big of a deal because when you want, want to go to something, it's, just, it's not that confusing. And so that inserts the keyframe there. Um, we actually haven't done anything that special. They're just standing there in their T pose, more or less. We're going to, you know, I named it idle. We're going to do a simple idle. Um, Actually, probably going to be a little bit casual than an idle. Uh, yeah, I cracked it a little bit. But I still have some weirdness there, unfortunately. So I'll do some little contraposto. Weight is here. If the weight's on this foot. The. Wow, I got like weird, like, fusion. <laughs> The weight's on this foot, the left foot. Um, so this one comes back up. This is the one I want. I want to get this. So this is the toe one. It's a little bit weird. This rig's a little weird I set up, but it's fine. And these up here. The weight's on this foot, and that causes the hips to drop down this way. Oh, also on this, I really wish I knew a better way to do this. I still do it. But under the bone, we don't inherit rotation right here. That means when we rotate this, kind of lets us do this, which is really helpful a lot of the time. But when we use our root, it kind of defeats the purpose of having a root because the rotation inheritance stops right here. And uh, it can let you like lead to a lot of shitty animation stuff that's really annoying and I just I don't have a better solution yet. Here and in contraposto as these hips go this way, these shoulders go this way. And go ahead and just sort of do a casual like excuse me. Why are you doing that? That's making me mad. Something like that. Yeah, I have to face that. Why is the toe following it? That's what I want, but I've never done. Did I do it by what? I don't understand. I've never seen that. That's good. I've always wanted that. I don't understand it. <laughs> okay. Well, there we go, I guess. Weird. I'm about it. Does it do with my elbows? I guess it's just how I set up the inheritance with the... Um, not inheritance, but how I just set up the IKs. Whatevs, yo. Oh, just a little... And on the hips, anime BS thing goes. A little bit. Wrong foot I wanted to bring in. Wait, it's been so hard. It looks like it did. <laughs> I know you're probably tired of hearing that, but. I do a little bit. The other way. And probably this pose shouldn't be this sort of dynamic or gestural because it's and in there. But we'll, we'll change it to fit our needs. So I hadn't inserted any keyframes yet. We hit I. You can set it so every time you make a change it inserts it. I don't particularly like that. I can understand why people would like it though. A little bit out. A little more attitude that way. Sure. 
Please. Take that. And Shift D to duplicate. I need the same commands when you're working in here and working with your UVs. UVs is a separate thing. But it's just nice to know that a lot of the commands are universal. That. Get it over again. I actually haven't animated much yet. I just sort of made it a, made a keyframe. So it was good to check in. Orthographic and everything too. Load up in. You can see even by default. Change. I'm gonna get that capsule out of the way. I wanted to wait. Show you how. I don't know. <laughs> it's pretty easy. Remove component. I think you can right click and do it. You click the gear. I'm gonna remove that. This. I didn't see. So generally, like, we're gonna do a lot of like fancy parenting stuff. So what I like to do is create empty. We have character. Then create empty and then I draw. And then there is where we actually parent all this stuff. So this to get this there, you drag it in in the scene, and that way it's all parented and everything. It pops an animator on there. Um not model, you can call it just I don't know. <laughs> all I want to call it is model, but that's not quite it. I mean I guess I call this model. I call this mesh, even though it's a little bit redundant and weird, but Wait, that should say body. But I don't. Um, the reason is because a lot of the rotations and stuff we'll do with character. No, that's not ideal. But you can. We'll have like a rotation point, and we'll change that. Like it's so. The reasons. Move this around, and then we can like do character shakes and stuff. Actually, we'll probably take a different path for doing that. Do like one more parent. A little bit different than what I normally do. And draw. And so the draw is kind of like where all our rendering is, right? And then it, we also have it so we can do like character shakes, which is a really great way to create impactful stuff. And it should be up on our hip more. It. Still a little weird. here not supposed to look a little natural dang it I do that so much like on a weird frame and I don't really To check on my pose, my real life self. All right. <clears throat> Move that knee back forward. 
make sure we're under the weight here. But our feet, you know, are under our center of gravity, is what I mean. Grab this, back a little bit more. Seems like casual or like sloppy, I guess. Did it again. Isn't looking too hot. <laughs> it's not awful, but it's just no, not loving it. It's looking better. But we'll see when it's in the game. Give it unity. It's not going to be too important. Still a little whack. Not that important, though. <clears throat> Go on our next one. So we're going to do like a run. So. I don't understand all this. <laughs> we want to hit F to make sure it saves it. And it's called like a user based thing. I think it's because you can like share animations like across. I don't know, dude. Like there's a reason, but I don't know what it is. Click on that and it'll make a copy. Have to make sure it saves. We'll call this one run. So now go ahead and A, clear post transforms. Put that there. Bring that over. Now we'll do a run. Let's go ahead and do the old Google run cycle. Well, that matches our character. The old Preston Blair here. I say this a lot whenever I do animation videos, but this is a really good book. Um. Just called animation. Oh, cartoon animation by Preston Blair. One of the only nice things my stepmom did for me. <laughs> and a, and an angry lady. And she believed in art. Like she's an artist. She's a photographer. It's just ugh. Had a rough life, man. So let's go ahead and just start with a fun pose. You know, usually this one. Common. Action pose. Right foot forward. And got our foot really extended out like that. Excuse me. Back like this. Already, that's kind of fun looking. So, yeah. If not, no, I'll use the toe in this tutorial. We'll see. Go ahead and swivel the hips a little bit forward. Break the knees a bit. Insert that. And of course, hands are going to go forward. Use the opposite shoulders. You're gonna turn the stomach. You're gonna turn the chest. Don't forget, you can select in here. You left click in here, and then you right click in here. That was a little bit inconsistent, but that's okay. Well, there's some wacky, wacky stuff happening <laughs> that's not correct with my um, thing on this one, apparently. That one seems fine. 
That one actually does seem fine. Something's whack with this one, unfortunately. It's really annoying. I thought I tested it okay. So real quick, we're gonna have to, well, let's make sure we insert those keys. We didn't do much. Uh, go to our armature. Look to make sure we have those ones. So, something going on with this, not quite right. No constraint. Offset local to local space that won't local the world. Bad, I think. Bad. No. <laughs> yeah, well, these. Local to local with the offset. I don't know. Maybe this one just. Don't understand. The world to world, no offset. Fortunately, it's going to make it so when we move around, hand stays in place. Kind of like how um stays like on these ones, it doesn't do that. <laughs> Where the foot sort of stays and then you offset it from there. I don't, I don't know why it's working so well with the foot. It's not working on these ones. about that. My sister needed a controller so she could play Call of Duty with her husband. Obviously I had to stop for that. Yeah, see it's all fudged up. Man, I'm sorry. Alright, we're not gonna worry about it. Um we can just re-export after we fix that. We'll just work on the animation. So for now. World space to world space. Even though I don't prefer it, I like how you can do the offset. And I've run into this problem before, but it was working with the feet, so I just sort of copied it over. Um, yeah, anyway. Insert that. Pretty beefy, which I like. Mm. 
interesting because we turned the yeah, kind of up there. It's pretty fanciful. That's ideal, but it's kind of fun. I might like her leaning forward more. Because again, it's a character action game. What's wrong with you? Gotta make it dope. But we have settled on sort of a cartoony style, so we'll forgive ourselves. <laughs> A better way to handle these and stuff. Right, is it? So, run cycle. I forget all the names. It's like contact. Okay, here we go. Contact, recoil, passing, high point, contact. And this isn't the exact timing that you want. Like, this isn't a linear timing. You kind of want to use that a bit. There's different philosophies about it, you know. It's, I, I, there's you know, I feel like these philosophies take into account like some stylization. Um but they're all good. You know, they're all these are all important poses. Um we start with of because it's more fun. So now we'll do contact. right here um i actually like to um do this first what we do six c divided by eight forgive me about a math five so we'll just do eight frames and then we'll make it a little bit longer Two, three, four. Something's wrong. That's fine. Anyway, we're gonna go here. One of the most awesome, dopest BA things you can do in 3D. You can do Control C, so we copied all this, and you can do Control sh Shift V. And that's going to mirror your paste. We'll go ahead and insert that. And we're basically done. <laughs> Not really, but let's see. That's that, uh, that IK stuff is like really giving us trouble now. No good. Seems fine on this one. I don't understand that. Clear rotation. I did nothing. <laughs> Go ahead and do that and correct it ourselves. So, you know, that's not ideal, but it's just going to give us sort of that motion as we do our in betweens. Um, just gives us something like sort of a baseline that all those tweens will have. 
Control C, same thing. Control Shift V. Even though this is highlighted, and I do Control Shift V, it's gonna do the correct one. And go over there and insert that key. You can see she's kind of like swing her arms out wide like that. Not the look we want, but we're getting there. So here, we can go ahead and just insert it. Uh, we shouldn't do that actually. So we're eight frames over, so we're going to do it every eight frames. And we're going to do our contact. So that one's like you're up here, you first hit. And we show the heel like that, which I hate because that's not how you run. <laughs> Even normal people run like the average person doesn't even run like that, which I understood. It's going to depend on the pose. You know, we're, you know, good running posture is actually you're pretty upright, but we're dope anime heroes, so we're going to lean forward. Build in the middle just a little bit. Our foot kind of. Pulling forward already. Might not have to do too much. We'll correct our elbows a little bit. We might want to wait on that. We might just do the feet first. Because the less keyframes that you make and still make it good, the more you can go in and just in certain parts um, and just sort of correct that. Now, I'm down like that. And I forgot a step, and that's. Down a bit and grab feet as we do that. I almost need these three. Ready? That's pretty cool. Again, we're gonna make those hands look better. We're just this is just our starting point. So same thing, but I can hit the toe for some reason. I'm going to delete that. It's not important. But I can hips and control C those here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Control Shift V. Please over here. Control Shift V. Insert. We have the same thing. Okay. We look at different distance. Yep. Yeah, and our hands are wide, and we're gonna do that. And I forgot to go ahead and. That's on frame E8. Please have this end at 47. And there's still going to be some weirdness with the tweening um, as we skip over, and we'll correct that. But if we hit Alt A for animate, you know, it's looking a little whack. <laughs> but we're on our way. Next, so we have passing, which is low points. Really, yeah. See, I thought that was wrong, so we're gonna have to scoot them all over by one. But that's gonna be easy. We have our passing, so we're gonna watch this foot. Six, seven, eight, and it's more like this. This foot's almost right. We might correct a little bit, or we might leave it. Again, this is our our style. We're gonna do what we want. Excuse me. Lower. Actually. That. Insert that. On that note, we might just get away with 
deleting that. So now we have like one keyframe here. Just might bring that lower just for that reason. That out. Actually, back here. So we're gonna go ahead and delay that. We give it timing. Get all those. Kind of go up too fast. Um, we actually have our rising one kick off a little bit different. Kind of passing that. We're just kind of leaping into the air right here, which we don't want. We need to show that push off with our foot. That's what we're going to do because I made a mistake. And you can box select just like you can over there and do great G. <laughs> G to grab. I did 10 on purpose to show that you can. Well, I guess that's not on exacts. I'm going to show you. You can type it in like you can in other stuff, but. Eight. Now, show that kickoff, which will be a lot cooler. Go. Show that we're real animators. Actually, we don't need to do. Oh wait, yeah we do. Okay. Oh, gosh. That don't need to. So that's a little weird. I'm gonna go ahead and push that too. Here. A lot of times, like, kind of like push up really hard. We're actually, like, kind of high up here. It's another stylized thing. So, still want to correct these hands. Get rid of our low points here. That for now, it's simple. See now, I can just actually do all that over again. So, grab the keyframes, only those two, so control C, control Shift V, insert that. Go here, keyframes, we'll see. Shift V, those. I missed some keys for some reason. I don't know what happened. I thought I got them. They grabbed the wrong key. I don't know what happened there. But thought I had that grabbed. That was a little weird. Delete that for now. What I'm doing, you know, this is the key, this is the frame, and I'm looking at what keys we have keyed already, and so I'm just gonna grab those and I'm holding shift there. That's about it. Over here, control C. Great frames. Like over here, control shift V, reverse pace. We got some weirdness again. But it might be because we don't have that tween. Here. Take a look. Make 
makes more sense with eight frames. That's a little whack. Now we want to work on our timing. There's some good parts to it. Just thinking. Some passing frames with like the sort of like rear foot that I don't think is very strong. This one, I know we like corrected it, but I'm thinking. What? That was weird. I don't want to correct this. up with that hand pissing me off both those hands doing weird stuff like right here like what's your deal dude Now it's doing new weird stuff. Picking me up. Well, that's not too bad. There's a lot of things you'd want to do, but. We might even be able to get away with one more of them. We'll just see what happens. Actually, a separate thing. <laughs> oh no, because then it's going to go straight up there. Okay. Go ahead and save that. Now we're running, which is cool. Um, we want to set up our character controller. We go here our animator is. Like it's not. Eight. Character controller. We'll call it player character controller. <laughs> and double click on that. It's gonna bring up the animation editor. Create a state. Empty. Call it run. We can actually call it idle. Um yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. Um, we can tween between it all. And we'll make it pretty dynamic. Um, we'll start with just... Um, just 2D. Oh. Great state. We're going to do from blend tree instead. So we'll call this idle. It's actually going to be have our run and stuff in it too. I'm doing this wrong. Great state, empty, idle, and in the motion. Can you do a blend tree? What am I forgetting here? Did I do it right the first time? I thought you could.
guess that's it. One last try. I'm just a little confused here. Thought you could just create a blend tree. Is that it? Is that what I'm doing? Like... Call it idle tree. Uh, for now, we could do one dimensional. Yeah, that's what I thought. You do this. I guess it's just whatever. <laughs> idle. Run. No. Not one. Good. So we're gonna go ahead and add one more. Run. And this one, I'm gonna multiply. So that means from here to here, you know, it's gonna be just like a startup. Go ahead and this one. Run speed. I just call it speed. No, because I might mean like the speed of the animation. Let's call it run speed. Move speed is the word I want. So based on move speed, it's gonna change the animation so right now our move speed is zero so we're just staying hang, hanging out there um actually gonna already it's gonna bug me <laughs> make a real idle so we're gonna go to this idle we're gonna duplicate it just so we have a backup we're gonna call it casual because it's just like fun <laughs> then we're gonna go back to our run have something that's kind of close to standing Copy that, and I actually should have just copied from here instead. Final here, and I have a more boring but way more functional sort of idle state here. That's pretty good. A little bit more forward. I won't make this better in the future, but this will make the run blend look a lot better. I don't lean forward. Oh, maybe not. Like it. It's a dumb head. <laughs> no. It'll look cool eventually. Go ahead and save that. Now idles like this. We hit play, you know, idles, nothing's going on. But as we start running, that, you know, we're about halfway. You can see there's a big, bit of a clunk there where it stops. We just need to correct that in our, our animation here. Then. Start running, and it's looking a little whack, and that animation's not great, we're gonna fix it. I don't know why the hand goes up so high there. I thought we fixed that, but... And then, we can actually increase the speed. It's really showing, like... It looks okay here, but... Some of the problems with our animation. So, I wanna correct those first. Second me. Go down here. I really thought I brought these down more. Mm 
more wacky stuff with the rotation thing they need to fix. They actually don't seem too low. <laughs> Floppy hand. What are you doing? Not. Not great, but we're getting there. See, one of the problems, wow, issues I face a lot of times is um, so you go from here and watch this front foot. Go to the up here, and then we go down, and it doesn't kind of goes out and then comes back and that's that's not ideal want more is like go out a little bit here push that Control C and here, control V because it's the same. Yeah. Going on, did I bring that back? What? Did I do it on this one instead? What? Whatever. You hate me. Why though? Still looking a little bit better. And we want to do that same, you know how we stop on the timeline at 63. We actually want to do that in our animation. And, uh, back. Look better. It's okay, but. Go ahead and click on here and go to animations. This is our model blend file. Go to run 62. The reason it says 63 and ours says 63 is because it starts a negative one. That's one of the reasons why I start at one in here. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> Just as long as you get it right in the end. Go ahead and hit apply. We're actually going to do loop time on this one. And this one. Or excuse me, loop pose. That was bad. What? Or no loop. Oh yeah, loop time. Oh, loop pose is where it like creates its um, good. Whoa. And so you may notice like in the threshold, like these are the, the values, like zero to one is kind of a good idea for us. Um, even if we want like a super speed run like later, like if we want it like five or something, kind of want to do zero to one. Um, it just, oh my God, how weird, why did that happen? <laughs> it's just so, um, 
we have something simple to work with zero to one in our code. You know what I mean? Um, and on that note, what I was getting to next. Slide it over here. So, you know, here, five. And we may notice that we want to this or so as we speed up. How hard can we go? That run look better? That would look dope, but it just looks silly right now. Not too bad, but we'll fix that run. I can see a lot of problems with it already. Just her feet are too far apart. I don't know what I was thinking there. I wasn't. It's part of the problem. We'll go ahead and leave that. So here, you know, and this is stuff we can correct as we play. Try and get a real implementation going. Let's double check our forwards. So global forward on this. We'll go ahead and call it player. Global forward is this way. Check our rotations on all these. We have a negative 90, which isn't quite. Global. The reason I do it on the offset is because character is how we're actually going to do our rotation here. Um, that way, um, I don't know, I've just found that you can kind of move this stuff around and not rotate anything. Because the rotational type stuff, you generally don't care about the collision. Well, this is like rotating around um, the player collision, which is where you need the character controller and where our coll collision will be. We don't need that collider anymore. Um, this is built into the character controller. Double check that, yeah. So, controls are still working, cool. Actually, want our character to face 90 or negative 90. But we're going to correct that. Woo! Totally video game now. Your gravity feels kind of shitty. Didn't know I could hold it. I must have done something weird. I messed with some of the code in the meantime just to try and clean up some of it, but it looks like it's totally not working right. <laughs> Kind of weird. I thought that was working all right. I'm gonna open that up and investigate because that's. Oh, I call it something else. That's funny because like this is a favorite in my own project. I thought it was project dependent, but picture objects what we call it here. Yeah, so I just I changed it to get button. I was going to get the input buffer and stuff working, but I can hold it and we're not getting any bugs. First person runner. You all love runners, right? Oh, some of them are good. That was that was mean. Shouldn't be mean to runners. We're going to set up some of this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go in here. Public game object. I'm going to call it character. Public game object. Draw. Transform. You can just call it draw. Sign those. Just real quick. Uh, I shouldn't be doing this. Probably I should do it in the order of. Okay, let's just get the move thing working first. So I'm gonna do animator. My animator. And we can do it like this. My animator. Let's get kind of animator. But we can also assign it in here if we need to. Oops. 
try again. On here. Nope. No. Here. Now we're going to want a new update. Void update animation. So let's do some animation stuff. We also want just a general multi. Eh, we don't have to worry about that yet. But for sure, we need. Um, move speed. Not void. <laughs> Look. I may already had that up here. Is that right? Gravity, friction, velocity. I actually thought I did have that already, but I guess not. And we're actually going to call it Annie Move Speed. So that way, anything that starts with Annie, we know that we use for our animation system, that those are values that we pass to the animator. Um, so I'm going to cheat. <laughs> up unity again and I need to get the rotational um, formula you know based on our lateral speed to get our rotation it's pretty easy I think you just do look rotation and like exit at, or um, zero out some values but I want it to be fast now why does that I think it's in here Oops. The lateral speed, this right here. Go ahead and copy that for now. And we'll go over the code specifically in here. Oops. And you can see this is the code for actually setting that in our animator. Animator. Keep doing that. I want to know our rotation first. I want to set that first. So I do check velocity dead zone. That way it's like if there's little jitters or you're only moving like the tiniest bit, um, you don't necessarily face right away. Um, and we'll make a more complex one where we can kind of ease into it. Um, and then we'll go over things where like, do you want your velocity always based on like your facing? That'll give you a little more natural movement. Like if you hit right on your controller, your player is like facing away from you. They'll start moving, but they'll turn right. Do you know what I mean? And they'll kind of they'll move forward. So that means they're gonna move in the background a little bit, if you know what I'm saying. But we're gonna keep it strict in Arcadia at first. So we'll go ahead and do this. And we'll do this dead zone stuff later. We just want to get this working right away. Base velocity. And this is a method we'll probably use a lot. You can see already we do like character dot transform rotation, um, and that you know we'd already that's a carryover. You know it's character, and that what that means specifically is it's just going to be this transform here. That way we can have assets, and like there's a, there's always good reasons to have them. Parenting couldn't think of the word. these for us it's actually velocity dot x
last week. Oh, I said that I was like, where'd it come from? It's probably coming up right away. Blue speed, I believe that's what we call it. Double check, blue speed. I want this. Um, it's a separate thing. <laughs> Base velocity. I want in uh, update physics. I'll bring this up here. No sense. Mm -hmm. So why X and Z? Because Y is up. So X and Z is our lateral movement. You know, left and right and then foreground and background, basically. I'll put it simply. This. Um, so this we're just gonna have to mess with. Because now you have to, you know, you have your own game feel for how your character is moving around. Bring it back here. And kind of have to figure out like what that maximum speed is, and then you kind of lerp that or in, you know interpolate that to one, and you know down the line we may want a faster speed or other types of movement and things like that. Um, you just have to adjust it. That might be really vague, but you'll understand in a sec. It might not be that vague. Oh, I just didn't set it in here. So what it was saying is like it's trying to mess with character, but it doesn't know what character is yet. So we'll go ahead and just assign it manually. We'll do draw while we're at it. Um, we'll do draw for something else. We might. It's likely we won't get to that today. Um, it's just for extra effects. Um, like in my game, I use it for character shakes, but I also do it for like crazy sort of like blinking effects and um, yeah, like stuff like that, and like a combination of the two for like cool. I, don't know, I guess I could show you. Go off a little bit. <laughs> for like, when I was using the right sword. For stuff like this. You know, she like blinks like that. Things like that. Cool. Here. Base velocity. So, that should try to work. Let's see what it does for us. There we go, and it's opposited. Um, let's see if we go to our player. Do ninety zero. Uh, doesn't like it. What's the, uh, the old deal here? <laughs> Rotating this, but it's not. Doing the wrong thing. Rotation. There are only two instances. If I rotate this at the same time, it should. Was, am I am I wrong there? <laughs> I mean, obviously it's not working, but yeah, it works. It works. A little confused. I mean, I know how to fix it. I just, I thought I could just correct it with this. That's probably why we do the velocity dead zone thing too. 
Um, that way it only does it. So when we come to a stop, it's just going to want to force us to face a certain way. And there's other ways you can get around that, like to only set it if we're moving and things like that. Why, though? This shouldn't matter. Don't get it. I guess that's just the character controller, like we can't rotate it. That might be the other reason why I have all this parenting. I must have just forgot about that. Anyway, we just need to fix that. Um, I kind of want to actually do the full on. <laughs> 3D movement. Um, it'll look a lot cooler. Which one is it? Cool. So, it's called stick move. Camera relative move. Excuse me. I think I'd call it stick move somewhere else. Okay. Please. What? I'm kind of mad. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> Pretty sure that's what it's called. Change it? Update control relative to camera? I don't understand. I don't remember calling it that at all. <laughs> Use this. I guess I just copy that. Really don't remember changing the name. It's a little weird. And we'll go through it all. So go ahead and remove this whole type stuff. We do that. And it's apparently not a function. Okay. So I use this a lot. I'm this might be okay to just make a local variable, but um Excuse me. <laughs> this part. Didn't I make a left stick? Left stick? No? You don't lie to me? <laughs> I thought I did that. Update input. Stick move old. Well, here it is, I guess. Go ahead and just copy this over. So, vector two stick help equals Why is vertical? Why'd I call it horizontal? Did I really call it that? 
Sometimes I'm just like, what? <laughs> what was I thinking? They call it horizontal. Vertical. All right. <laughs> You're the boss. You make the engine. I don't know, right? <laughs> So what's happening here is we're holding on to these values like so stick help is get axis from horizontal and vertical and that's left and right and up and down on the left stick so why do you matter right here Seems a little weird. So, velocity plus equal. My bad. Okay, cool. Another vector three called velocity direction. View camera down in main. Transform that forward. So that's a static function you can do to just grab the current camera. So, because this is a camera, to camera relative movement. We have our stick help, which is our stick input. Um, we check it against the dead zone, make sure we don't move if it's not in the dead zone. If the square magnitude is greater than one, we normalize it. It just helps. Um, you know, if you're all the way left and all the way up, like negative one, positive one, or it can be. And so you'll get some incorrect values. Um, you'll go a little too fast at times. Um, but if you normalize it all the time, I was getting errors, so I just only normalize it if the square magnitude is something good for like vectors. Kind of like the length. Maybe it is the length, I don't know. <laughs> um, normalize it if it's too big. So we take our velocity direction, you know, we call it that, we could call it maybe camera direction or something. Um, and we make it camera, the current camera, forward direction. And then we zero out the y on that. And then we normalize it. So now we have a normalized vector that's only lateral, that's only along the x and the z. Um, I'm not sure what's sticking on one of those. Oh, okay, so velocity helps. So that's gonna be our end velocity. We increase that by that velocity direction times the y value so it's like and that means up and down on our stick so stick help so it's like vertical on the left stick times that like the velocity direction so that lateral lateral based on the camera transformed up forward so that means it's relative to the camera so it's the lateral, you know, it's the forward and the side. But if the camera is pointed down at us a bit, it's going to be a little bit different. But generally, it, it, it's still what you want because up is forward. You know what I mean? You have to make some concessions. It makes sense in the end, right? Like we've all done 3D camera controls, it's, or at least controlled them. Um, so here we do the same thing, but we just do it with the transform dot right. And then we zero out the Y value because we don't want to. I mean, we don't necessarily have to if we didn't add it to the Y. Um, in my own game, there's 3D movement with like flying enemies, and so that's why I did that. And I kind of combined them because I don't know why. <laughs> why I made it its own thing. So instead of stick move, we'll do camera relative stick move. That, shift F12 to find references. 
code, can't remember, relative stick move. No? Can we spell it? Whatever. Oh, it doesn't take. Oh. <laughs> Forgot we already implemented the uh, event system. So we do want that. I forgot where that sat in here. No value. We multiply it all at the end by that. Our velocity help times equal the value we pass. Save that. Go ahead and change our camera a bit. So better position to. See what's going on. Let's see where this takes us. Very fast. <laughs> so where is that? Go to our game engine. Data. Let's do 0.05. Let's really like reduce it because that was fast. I'm getting some weirdness. Um, it's a little bit off. When I do left, I'm getting a diagonal for some reason. It's kind of confusing me. <laughs> I don't know why. And we're still facing the wrong way. But it's pretty cool. I mean, we are basically there. I think I just left out a, a variable. Um, let's see here. May have needed to leave these velocities. Maybe I left one Y when it should have been Z. Let's see. A little weird. I thought I did it right. I'm at a loss, identical. I'm gonna copy it over, right? <laughs> Yikes, that's no good. I have to think for a sec. Because when I hit left, I go diagonal, when I hit right, I go diagonal. But up and down are perfect. Even when I do like, the angles, <laughs> <It's> weird. <laughs> like maybe it's the dead zone or something. Go ahead and zero that out and just see. Comment that out. Excuse me. Could be a setting in the inputs with the horizontal and vertical, or I'm just missing a variable or something. I'm still doing it. Very weird. <laughs> okay.
Dudes. The dead zone is just a number, right? <laughs> What? Oof, sorry. This one? I mean, I know it's in the other one, but... really weird <laughs> like nailed it up and down works great yeah, that square magnitude thing is wrong on this you know getting the input like the raw input is a little bit different I mean, this seems like real obvious to me, like, because transform dot forward means it's going to move us laterally because we zeroed out laterally up and down based on where the camera is facing. So that means, you know, up on our stick is forward from the camera down on the stick. I mean, it's really straightforward. I don't understand. Every time, dudes, every time, my dudes, gotta have something wrong. <laughs> Can't have a simple stream. <laughs> I remember what I changed this time. I didn't. I root it. That's so weird. Like, feeling it is, like, so weird. Like, left is this. Right is this. So I do down right, and it's fine. I do up left, and it's fine. Kind of. <laughs> No, nope. it went fast all of a sudden. What gravity does, dudes? Do why this default input fudged? Yeah, that's whack. That worked for some reason. And I need to invert it. Wow. I've never seen that. It's working now. <laughs> so it was the input stuff. That's weird. We need to correct the, the actual facing, but... We have some stick movement, which is really dope. Ooh. So... Wrong one. Data animation. To set that move speed. So we need to. All right, let's get back in there. Check our move speed on the animator. Move speed is one apparently. And yeah, we're not running, so I think you're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> we're setting our animations I mean we should go to this one right away and I'm not sure why we're not just like running in place I 
strange. This one to loop. Not the boop boop. Yeah. Oh, we definitely need to set this stuff. It's just. Alright. Eight. Set animation. It's a new one. Board set animation. My animator dot start. What is it? Dot crossfade. What's the one I do here? Dot play. I don't know. I couldn't remember that. Could have looked it up in here too, just been cycling through, but whatever. State name hash. We'll just do strings for now. Um, this will be another thing we'll have to set up so we can index our states and I don't know. We can do it in different ways. Like you could do it so everything has really generic names. And so it's like attack one, like everyone will have, you know, so many attacks and that way you just have a bunch of generic names and, you know, idle, of course. We might have to jump first or something. Already set. You're a, a liar. Um, so, should have get component and children if I was going to do that, but we'll just set it manually. Like, you know, we already set it in here. In weird ways. Oh, I didn't set that stuff. Um, it was in run mode, so. Didn't keep it. My axis. Half of it kept, though. Hmm. Okay. Now we're fast for some reason. There's some weird input stuff that's making this go really fast. Idle isn't ever playing though. I don't know why we go so fast up there sometimes. So, before we go on, let's make this better. Go to our core data. And we're going to want, this is where like, you may want to set it up. And I'm thinking about doing this in my own game. So all my character states are set just to the mechanum thing. Um, Let's uh, head in. Right now, we already have our character states here. So, please. Character states. State name, index, like. And honestly, we could just use the state name, I suppose. Neutral here. Didn't do that. It's called idle now. <laughs> I do that all the time in my own game. Neutral. So now when we start a state, we will just play. So in the set animation thing, we're passing a string. We'll just do animator.play. And so set animation, and we will do 
current state, right? So we gotta do import data character states state current state dot state name. So go ahead and pass that. Um, so now, whenever a new state starts, it'll play the animation that shares a name with it. And that's one way you can set up. There's so many ways you can do it. Um, it, it gets a little weird. There's other Mechano tutorials out there. Um, I wanted to show it this way. I don't know why we're so fast sometimes. So let's check out our animator. I feel like... Not really moving. <laughs> Really kind of bug me. Let's start debugging. Start. Called. Nope. Neutral. It is called neutral, right? Neutral. He's all loop, right? I mean, they're not running at all, but. Idle and run do. Not playing at all, though. It would show in here that it's playing. What am I missing here? That's annoying. Ugh, sorry. Oops. Out. Now I'm like, I think I need to look at something again in there. I just closed it. Master. Might be a thing on this thing. I knew it. So I forgot to put the controller in here. So the animator was just hanging out by itself. I had no controller. So now we're idle. Cool. Well, oh. so now we can start adjusting those speeds. We're still facing the wrong way, which is hilarious. Now let's go ahead and update it so we are actually round to player. Touch on the ground. It's here. Here. How high off the ground they are. That's okay, I want to them, not him, what I said. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> I mean, it's when I jump and when I go to the new state, it's like I don't I have unfettered speed. Um, yeah, so we need to check out this blend tree. Bring it over here so we can check it out when we're working. Where's the rest of it? So annoying. Real quick, there's probably a better setup. So our move speed isn't changing. And why is that? <laughs> oh, 
Oh, move speed run, move speed. Are we doing update animation? No, we're not. Working, I didn't let it save fast enough. Idle yet? Definitely an idle. Leave neutral, excuse me. Doesn't say that it's playing. I mean, it's changed our animation to this part, but. Who speed isn't getting changed? Here's ours, our actual one. Excuse me, I don't know why. It usually does that by default. So I was doing the static, like basic one here. I actually needed to be on the character here. So when we're at maximum quote unquote speed, only at 0.04. So we want to multiply that by, you know, I had like a value like 60 in my own game. I'm bad at math. We'll do times 30. Again, these are just little things you think of. In your own game. Woo! <laughs> Kind of bad, but it doesn't look too bad. And we're still facing the wrong way, so. Cool. But yeah, we gotta adjust that face velocity on the way it's working back. Rotate. Looks like it was rotated already, and maybe that was the issue. Oh my god. All right. Well, that looks pretty badass if I do say so myself. Woo! I don't know why that happened still. Slow down. So that was a little weird. Let me check that. See, you know, it's just all those different things that we did. Um, so we have our do update animation so these are our different animation values um you know we have our lateral speed which is our velocity x and our velocity z we do the square magnitude again so it's kind of like the length of that lateral speed and multiply it by 30 and that's just an adjustment to make it work with our animation system and then we set that in the animator and then we have our camera relative move plus our face velocity and we went through all that so camera relative move means we're going to move this way and then our character is going to rotate to face that velocity. And then, you know, it's a little goofy, but I like it. Like, it feels cool. <laughs> Actually feels really good. Um, it's real bouncy. Wasn't what I was expecting. That makes it fun. So, I don't know. You can hear my voice change. I'm feeling pretty good about it. That's cool. Um, so now, let's go ahead and add some more states. Um, We'll do a simple jump. Start with idle. Go ahead and duplicate that to a uh, jump. And we'll do like a Mario type one, or I tend to default to a Mega Man Zero esque jump, especially specifically Zero. E pose right away. Also do some advanced like blending stuff here in a sec. Generally, like, you know, you just sort of thrust up like right leg. Pretty dope. 
um, gonna be preference on whether or not you want this foot to like go through the ground. Um, you know, or what I'm really meaning is like how far off the ground you want this part of them. Um, Cause we're updating the physics too. I tend to make them look up a bit. It looks pretty dope. And as we go on with the tutorial later, in the coming weeks and stuff, we'll make this more stylized and cool. So what else we're gonna want? So jump is just gonna like put us into jump real quick. Actually, gonna be a really fast animation. We're also gonna want like an aerial idle. And so that's where it's going to get more and more complicated, um, depending on how you want your game to look. So, you know, we have this run, but if we have sort of a, you know, one way you can calculate it is if you're, well, there's a few ways you can do it, but, you know, like a lean, like if you're turning, you may want your character to, you know, lean into that turn. If we change directions, you know, we want like a Mario turn around and do a turn jump or whatever. Um... Which I think will be cool. To, I don't know what's up with that, dude. We got that. And then you see, okay. So here we go. The thing I wanted to show is, you know, we're still running when we're in the air. When we're in the air, we'll want, like, a different animation. So we're going to want another um, sort of blend in our blend tree. And they can get really complicated. Mine are really complicated, but you can just duplicate it over. Um, actually made it so it's automated when I make a new character I can just um, automate a lot of the blend things um, and there's different ways you can do it like if you can get away with just like if they're aerial start aerial state and you can have a separate state um, it's, it's up to you however you like how it works out logically for you to make more sense um, so anyway we also need an aerial state we have our jump let's go ahead do this do aerial and we'll make it a little, a little more relaxed, like they're still up in the air. But they're probably settling a little bit. They tend to have them like settle quite a bit. I think that looks cool. They kind of lean back like that. Kind of put their arms out a little bit more. Like that. And then, more and more advanced. You know, you may want like a forward and backward one, but I generally, what I do, is I have an up and down. So if they jump, or, or rising up in the air for some other reason, or they weren't getting punched, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, just getting gently pushed up for some reason. Um, you know, I have an animation that kind of shows the motion of them going up, and the same for going down. Like, if they're dropping down, and to, you know, pull their hands up a bit, like this. Where my elbow's at? So kind of like they're falling, you know, it kind of pushes their hands up. And we'll have some secondary animations with hair and stuff like that that'll help it a lot. And then, just like we have our move speed like this and how it just blends between them, and how they just come to a stop like that, we will do that when we're in the air as well. And it looks really nice. It's like, okay, here's a good example. It's like you run off a cliff, like you don't jump off of it. And so you just sort of ease into that fall animation. And we'll blend in between the up and the down and the neutral based on the direction we're going, and it, it looks really sick. Um, if I had Citadel Leap op open, I would show it, but <laughs> I close it. So we'll have this aerial state. Here, I just do about 30 frames by default, and I go on 20, but it doesn't matter too much. Um, I tend to have them be static animations, pretty much. Um, but then we do that blending between them, and it looks good. 
But if you wanted a next level, then you would. Better than that. So, I also realize that not a jump, but yeah, doing sort of getting in that pose. So there's like this, um, you know, that meme where the guy is wiping his forehead, like deciding what button to push, and it's like there's one for character animation because it's like make it super smooth or make it super responsive. And jump is one of the hardest ones in my opinion. Um, you know, you generally want responsive. But it can feel really good if you have like a tiny bit of startup. We're gonna see what we can get away with. So what we're gonna do is really have her crouch down. That already looks kind of cool. I was thinking about putting her hands up, but maybe this is cooler. I'll probably put her hands up because it'll show the motion of the hands better. Those. And we're just putting them into place quick. Elbows down. Used to animating like a stubby, cutesy character. Some weirdness with the AKs. going on man that's so annoying i gotta fix that we will eventually but then we get some weird stuff with the shoulder which is annoying but bad rotate y y to rotate along its y normal get some really really weird stuff with that i've never seen that before Do it on the wrong frame. We're going to want to pop into it. So what I'm going to do is like grab this, insert that right here, here, boom. Hands going quite that way. We want to go in the front. Yeah, I know these rotations are whack, but it's like something's weird. Like, and it's weird it's only happening to one. Flopping around and doing annoying stuff. That's really bugging me. Doing that. It's all sorts of whack. I gotta fix that. I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm doing that. Well, now because of that. Makes you just like not want to do this. <laughs> not the whole thing, but like the type of jump I'm doing. Ooh, that's so annoying. Uh, it's like it's making me anxious. I don't like it so much. Are they parented to something weird? Nothing weird, just the chest. That's normal. I gotta check. It's it's driving me crazy.
Thought I'd gotten rid of that. That's the elbows. Okay, cool. Excuse me? No, 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 no. Oh, wait, yeah, it might be because it's relative. It's not um, absolutely like not quote, not world. Local position. I do this jump a lot, like I don't know why it looks like shit. <laughs> Redo how I'm doing it. <laughs> Seems weird that they're moving around that much, though. I guess they're way above here. Hmm. All right, I'm like fudging it. Uh, over. Can be too fast for anyone to notice. <laughs> I don't know why I'm struggling with this today. I'm pretty I don't need her to be in the post. From there, she's going to. Go into the aerial state. Better. 
Even that pop down might just look really bad in game. That's not too bad. Look with that. I have to set all that up. Hours again, dang. A lot of work today. All important. See, like once you start using them, it's like it doesn't import them automatically anymore. It's so annoying. Like it's really like I don't like. We do add here and then because it has all the sources in here, but it's like you have to actually make clips. The loop. So now we need to go to our animator and we might have to delete. Not too. I remember those one through six. Zero. So what we want now is um, like another blend. So like if we're grounded or if we're aerial. Um, in my game, I have it so it's like it's for your hit stunts for a lot of stuff. Um, you could probably get away with a lot less than what I do in that game. And we're going to try and do that here too. Um, but we will need to delete this one, I believe. So now we need a new variable. We're going to call it Ariel. I'm going to rename this to the Ariel tree. We're going to do a new blend tree. This one is going to be blend tree. So let's actually call this the neutral tree. Maybe it was called that before. Maybe it wasn't. I So I guess at this point, no, because this is 1D, we don't want that. I think I delete it, unfortunately. Click on it right there. Delete. So here's our neutral tree. And the parameter is actually based on aerial. We got another blend tree. And we got an aerial tree. So if aerial is at zero, we're on the ground tree. And if air is at one, we're in the air. And then aerial, we're going to want. Sweet blend tree too. Oh, there it is. I thought it was it looked wrong. So the ground trees based on our move speed. And then we want another one in here first want it to be our you can call it fall speed um we're gonna have like a positive fall speed too like we're going up so call it fall speed is a little bit weird but it, it paints a understandable tree so or <laughs> understandable picture 1d Move speed. Speed. Here's two. Oh. So unfortunately, we got again. There might have been a way to copy it over. Title. Mm. 
And for the aerial tree, a little bit different. I have three. And instead, and I guess you could just make it a one right away. And you could correct that, you know, like, because you're sending the data back and forth between two things, so it's kind of like. You know, the numbers are really arbitrary, I guess. But right now, it's just all aerial. No matter what our aerial speed is, we're just going to be doing this. Um, but then we'll, after we implement the jump, we'll get that working first. And then when we're aerial, when we're falling, we'll have like a falling animation. Our hands go up a little bit higher. Or if we're going up, then our hands are kind of like, you know, like we're shooting up in the air. Our arms by our, you know, close to our sides, like becoming aerodynamic. So. And that's all for neutral. But now we just need to like get some of that data going. So date physics. Click float aerial. Public float all speed. That's all we need. We also need to make jump. Create a state. Jump. Animation. Let's see if that even works. Run working. Correction on the um, the IK has made her hand whack. Woo! That actually looked really good. <laughs> Please stop. So not great, but and we just gotta figure out like the timing between the states, you know what I mean? So what happens is that we actually want to blend into our next one. So we do animator.play, but we might end up doing this is so buggy, it's funny. Um start using crossfade by default. Um that we crossfade into the next one. We can do it based on a timing. We can also get around it a little bit by having a jump animation just blend into our aerial state. Um, I was trying to like get away from that. This is a little better, like more dynamic. Um, the actual jump is just this, right? I mean, that's kind of maybe a limited way to think about it because even my attacks, it's like, well, I'm trying to get away from that too. I'm trying to make it so my animations can crossfade with each other better. But it might be a good idea to, to explore that. That one, there's no state name dash. <laughs> so we're gonna kind of jump around here, which is the nature of game design. Go to our jump state. Use it. Didn't last that long. Don't want to stick move for the moment. Pretty good. We can make that a little more dramatic. It's a little slow. And then again, the animation's a little wacky, like on her hands, because I, my K's are stupid. Mm. It's lasting 60 frames. We kind of don't want that. Um, 15 times 2.5. Yeah, so that's like really. Hold on, like, no.
What? I'm like, it's at 24 frames per second. I'm trying to get the like general total. It's like, that's another reason why tying it to the animations might be better. Let's just do 30. <laughs> Oh, I didn't save the animation. So it's looking a little bit faster. It's not a great animation. We'll fix it. Sometimes it looks pretty dope. And we're not blending into our um, aerial neutral state. So now let's set that up. So we have to determine like how we become aerial, right? So that's a physics thing. That's why I dropped us down here. By default, it's sort of um, you know blocking us with the collision, but we're not detecting. Sorry, I gotta open this up again. <laughs> we're not detecting much more than that, and we need to start doing that. Oops. Okay. No. So, here's sort of the main thing here. Controller.collision flags and collision flags dot below not equal zero. It's a little bit weird, like why you have to have both in there. You can look it up, see anything. Um, so if there's collision below, then we turn our aerial timer to zero and our aerial goes to zero. Um, you know, this is for my game here. Um, if not, um, I have a bit of a fall off, so it's like, and we'll, we'll do it a little bit different here. Um, Part of the fall off is so that if you run off an edge and a few frames later you still hit jump, then you'll get your jump. You know what I mean? It's a common like video game thing. Um, just to give you some leeway. Um, but then we also sort of blend into that aerial timer and that's that animation state um, that we'll get to and we'll, we'll give it better names than I've used here. Um, but the, the beginning is right here. Copy that. And it's built in. We have the... Um, controller already on there. Well, it's not built in. We 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 did a reference to it. Um but it's um let's See where I had it in here. Right at the end. Okay. So this is our aerial check. And it's called my controller and ours. So this is grounded. So we'll do I want this one to be a bool. Hold it in here. So that's our fall speed, and then we just call it aerial. Call it aerial. The fall speed. I call it down animation in my game, so it's not much better. And some of these we have our flag and so this is like a strict touch the ground 
fair play equals false. Else, we'll count down that timer. And how many frames? Five. Um, if not quite aerial. Aerial timer plus if aerial timer aerial linear equal to five aerial flag equals and then <laughs> we also land that aerial state. Gonna be like 10 frames so let's do like oh, six might be really slow yeah it's way too many 10 frames 100 frames 20 frames right to equal one and then we're on the ground you, we could just go right into it but we might want to do a special blend um you know, like multiply it by 0.5 every frame, and that way it'll just sort of blend into it quickly, um, and you'll get a bit of a blend. I mean, why not? So, let's double check here. So, if we have collision flags and the collision flags are below, meaning we're hitting the bottom, area flag equals false. We're not aerial anymore. That one we want to be strict. As soon as we hit the ground, we're, we're not aerial. So we're grounded and we can do jumps and stuff. That aerial timer goes to zero. The aerial state multiplies down to zero. So, you know, it's greater than zero, less than one, which is a way to make things go to zero and multiply them. If not, if we're in the air, you know, based on our colliders, we're not quite in the air. And the aerial timer is less than or equal to five is what I meant to do. Increase that aerial timer. I think I, I did this wrong. Yeah, I did that wrong. Way wrong because already. Yeah, okay, that's okay. <laughs> I did it back here because I wanted it to um, count next, but let's just do this instead. It's easier. So we count our error timer immediately so I don't confuse myself. Aerial timer greater than six. If it just happened, it's not going to be six frames later. Aerial flag equals true, excuse me. Aerial state, start blending into that. Takes 20 frames. That's a little too slow now that I think about it. Do 10. Yeah. Give that a shot. And then. To set all these animation uh, animation values, any aerial state was one. The animation my animator dot set float aerial state I believe. Excuse me. And we also want to do. Fall speed, and we call it fall speed actually. Um, that anything I do here isn't required, that's just a personal one, so I know like what kind of thing we got going on. The fall speed is going to be, I mean, we could do it this way. Well, I guess it would just be velocity y. Multiply by 30, see what's up. That's another just adjustment we'll have to be, have to do. So 
No, for positive, it's going to do positive. And for negative, it's going to be negative, so it's already going to blend pretty well. Um, we're not going to see it yet because we haven't made those states. But let's. We wanted to just make sure our area was working, but we did a lot of stuff there. Not quite doing it. Check out our character and see what our states are doing. Area flag is going off. Check our aerial anti state. It's stuck at point one. Why is that? What? Oh my god. In the wrong game. <laughs> it should still count up. I mean, I don't think I'm on the ground that long. Going, going up by point one. Let's see what's up there. Make our jump stronger. Let's go to character state. Well, I guess we have it. Let's double it. That's a little. <laughs> Remember. Double velocity doesn't mean double height. It means a lot more than that. Already hating this. Okay, still getting that. Why is it doing that? Real timer. Sorry. Actually, I want that to happen faster, um, no matter what our. Well, that's not necessarily true. I do want this to be a little bit less, though. Still don't know what the problem is, though. I want that many frames of leeway. Not aerial flag. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's so obvious. I knew there was something a little bit weird about that. All right, all right, all right, all right. Being weird, not quite what we want. You can see it when we land, it like blends into it, which is nice. Check our state. Do it. So, aerial flags true. Aerial timer. Any aerial state is really high up there because I started it early, and that's fine. But the problem is that it's just getting to that state really fast. That's something we could make a variable and um, instead of using these magic numbers. Still no? The area state 
Air neutral. Air state is 0.3. Their air state is 0.3. Not much different from our. <laughs> Oh, it's not gonna blend the same way because no, it should. No, I know what's happening. So what's happening is that we're not we're not in idle. We hit jump and we're in the jump state. Well, that's another maybe <laughs> reason why maybe go to this aerial state during our jump animation. Um, I mean, we could. But, so we jump, that last 30 frames or whatever, our jump ends, and we immediately just pop into the idle state. When we're in the air, our aerial state's still counting up. It's still trying to get there. So we're right here, that's why we get this sort of weird limp looking thing while we're in the air. So, maybe we could just cross bait into the next one, as a general rule. Um, you could make specific things based on the state, um, but let's go ahead and just crossfade. Difference between a fixed time. How long do we want the transition to last? I don't know, third of a second? Like 0.13, something like that. Maybe give us some loosey goosey blending, but might look cool. Might want to set that as a. Now, I <laughs> actually want that aerial state to get there pretty quick. And frames, why not? Actually, to illustrate that, let's put some more objects in there. Let us just round a bit and I can show like, or we can show like falling animation and stuff. There. We gotta fix that facing. Oh yeah, we meant to set velocity to zero. Oh, there was that Castlevania stuff right there. So we could do Velocity dot y times equal oh point you know five so that's gonna make it go to zero like really fast um but you might just want to set it to zero let's just set it for now honestly I can't think of a time where like you might want to not get it it's like if you're skidding along some steps maybe um that way you could sort of simulate that. Jump, my dude! Oh, oh man. Come on now. Video games are hard. <laughs> Jumped over it again. Straight across? This is really hard to tell the perspective. <laughs> Didn't look so hot. Let's see what our...
It kind of blended into it. Actually, it, it did. It's just that the pose itself is weak. Or falling animation. That's just something we'd want to fix. Let's go ahead and do that velocity dead zone, and then we'll sort of wrap it up. I'll hoping to get some attacks and stuff done, but clean up the model for next time, and then we'll start doing some cool, 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 cool stuff. Hopefully this is still helpful. Check the velocity. The dead zone. Copy that. So we have that same dead zone. Well, we have our own dead zone here. And so that's why we don't pop into different directions when we stop moving and we just have a little bit of leeway. Let's get around and not face that velocity. And like I mentioned before, we can, you could be a little bit more strict about when to call that face velocity, but I find it nice to just sort of do it all the time and have exceptions. So now we're like, so by default, I kind of want Jump stay, I think that's how fast it lessens. I don't know why I'm doing that. Dead zone needs to be better. Why are you facing that way, my good dude? I don't know why that's happening. Is it because I never actually called that method? That couldn't be why. <laughs> what? Shut up. So, if that method returns true. Meaning, the velocity is greater in some lateral mode, some lateral way. Um, else, return false. And don't face it. So again, some weird blending here. Change it. As soon as we land, it's like there's a little bit of a delay, and I don't know why. I have some guesses. Um, aerial state is really big. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. <laughs> I swear I'm going to the one I want, but... So, if aerial state is less than equal to one, then we'll count up. That way... It was getting too big, so it's like if we were in the air a long time and then landed, it had to count down faster before blending out. Now... We land and we can have a landing animation but already it looks pretty cool and it lets us actually blend into our run and stuff too it's hard to notice but it's there this is funny i don't know video games are awesome <laughs> touch up that model nice if her arms are a little bit longer maybe i don't know maybe if i just um animate the shoulders a little bit better I think that about does it. Um, you know, right now, so I kind of glossed over some stuff um, because it was based on what we've already sort of done in a previous episode. We have our animation states, and uh, we just have a name tied to that, and then we just call that in our animator. Um, and that's how it gets tied to our animations. Um, 
I need to do a summary here, but we did a lot today. <laughs> um, I have split up the video, so I guess check out the first video if you want to see how we modeled it. It wasn't that exciting. The first part where we talk about concepting the character was exciting, however. Um, you can see, even though the an jump animation doesn't play, we kind of blend into that aerial state when I do that other... I called it dash, but it was just like a higher jump from the previous episode. Doesn't look bad. Kind of fun. We will get some guns and swords and body slams and all the good stuff we want next episode, I'm sure. I would love to like do it now. <laughs> I'm kind of tired. I don't know. Maybe we could go. Maybe I'll split it again. We'll see. I need to get dinner, I think. But um, thank you all so much for watching. Clean up this model. Um. Probably textured a bit. Um, there's plenty of texturing tutorials. You won't need to see that. Do the camera, maybe. I mean, we could do that. Oh, no more promises. I should cut it. No overworking. I shouldn't have worked this late, honestly. It's really important to um, take a break, even when you feel good. That's the problem. Keep going when you feel good. It's like eating when you feel hungry. But you gotta, you gotta let it sit a minute. <laughs> you gotta actually feel the effects. Um, it's going to be so cool with the default shader. I don't use it, but uh, we're using it now. It's pretty cool. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, we'll continue it. Um, I'd like to say next week, but I don't know. I keep uh, running into stuff. People always ask me to do things on my day off because I'm free, you know. But yeah, we'll get into the cool stuff. Thanks again. If you have questions, let me know. This will be available, of course. That's one of our core values here at Culture Attack, is to have free assets, have free knowledge. Patreon.com forward slash Culture Attack. If you want to support me, $1 goes a long way per month. If you get something out of it, think about it. But don't do it if you can't afford it. But... To get all anti-capitalist on you, and proudly so, you know, redistributing that wealth, while we're at least while we're in capitalism, is to, you know, give it to your creators. You know, you know, people use this phrase like, you know, a cup of coffee is only five bucks or whatever. You could do this, whatever. And it gets to be a little trite, but there's a little bit more to it. In the fact that you know all that those little bits of money could be going to creators you like. Um, that gives you stuff that's a lot more meaningful. I'm not saying that's me, but maybe it is. Thank y'all so much. I'm just trying to um, stretch this out. Couldn't think of the word because um, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Um, I'm not on Twitter so much lately. Just kind of getting sick of it. Um, so hit me up my Patreon or TylerDoke42 at gmail.com if you have questions. Um, I love to help out with other people's projects. Um, and to help people get this sort of stuff working, the link will be there for this project. We'll go ahead and just upload this whole thing. I, I didn't do it last time, I admit to. Just that there wasn't much there. It was mostly code. Um, and you could have gotten that. could have gotten that yourself. You should follow it along. But uh, I know how it is, so I'll go ahead and upload it. Uh, yeah. Pretty cool. It actually feels really good to move this character around. I'm pretty happy. Even though this animation is a little weird kind of matches the feel I wanted because we're, we're going for that mix of like you know almost like Mega Man but like Mario and Devil May Cry and some cool stuff we'll get to it it's gonna be great all right love y'all take care <laughs>